The JP-797 Turbo Skybuster is ready for test launch. Let's do it! Okay, here we go. Ten, nine, eight... Wait a minute! What are you doing? I'm putting a frog in the rocket! Is that a good idea? It is if you want to be the owner of a frog that breaks the world record for traveling in space! Is the frog going to be okay? I guess so. This is just a test anyway. Besides, he has a space suit! It looks like he's just wrapped in tinfoil. That is correct! Let the countdown continue! Eight, seven, five... Wait! Stop! I don't like this. I didn't build this rocket just so you could send some poor little defenseless frog into outer space. Well, that's why I bought it. Besides, this is just a test. The real launch comes later. And then my little frog will break a world record for being the only frog to fly into outer space. Then I'll be even more famous than I am now. You're famous now? I told you before, I'm a famous actor. I thought you were just kidding. But it doesn't matter. I, I still don't like this. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Wow! Look how powerful that engine is! This is a great rocket engine you've built for me! It pushed so much air, it knocked that statue right over! Unbelievable! Look at this frog. He's scared to death. He always looks like that. This isn't going to work. Of course it will. Look how much force it created. The wind knocked him. No, I mean there's no air in outer space. The frog won't be able to breathe. No, no air? Wait a minute. How will the rocket move in outer space if there's no air to push against? It'll work. No, it won't. But the frog's not going. Oh, yes he is. No, he isn't. Give him to me. No. I want him now. Hey, isn't that a photographer over there? Where? Hey, why I... Wow, that frog was in a hurry. That was my frog. Jane Plain just kidnapped him. What? Well, good thing I'm here, because I'm Fabian Sadowski, abalone diver. No, you're not. You're a Doug Savage science court attorney. Oh, right. Jane sold me a rocket that won't work in outer space. And then she stole my frog. Wow. Well, I'll see you later. Wait. We have to take Jane Plane to science court, where science is the law and scientific thinking rules. And prove that she sold me a defective rocket. And what about your frog? My frog? He didn't sell me anything. And that's why I took the frog, Miss Crumple. All Cramwood cares about is some silly world record. But doesn't the frog belong to Cramwood? Well, I guess, but I had to do something. I'm afraid you could be in a lot of trouble, Miss Plain. Did you also sell Cramwood a rocket that wouldn't work in outer space? No, the rocket will work in outer space. Mr. Cramwood doesn't understand the principles of Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. You really do like frogs. Oh, yes. A frog saved my life. What? How? Well, one day after school, when I was about eight years old, I took a walk down by the pond. And ever since then, frogs have had a very special place in my life. Hey! Oh. What time is it? So, will you help me? <sighs> We'd be glad to help you, Miss Plain, but you have to promise me one thing. What? Please don't ever tell me that story again. Especially if she's driving. Morning, stenographer Fred. Oh, hi, Judge Stone. What are you reading? Oh, it's a book about world records. Did you know that the tallest man in the world is six feet two inches tall? 
Fred, that can't be the tallest man in the world. He's a stenographer from Canada. And did you know the smartest person in the world is a stenographer who makes their home in Sarasota, Florida? Fred, there's a certain bias to this book. What's the name of it? The Stenographer's Book of World Records. Uh Aha. Thanks for that little tidbit of information. I'll see you inside. Jen Bett is here reporting live with attorney Doug Savage. Mr. Savage, uh-huh? how do you feel about your case against Jane Plain? I'm sorry, against who? Jane Plain. Oh, Jane Plain. And the frog? The frog. And the rocket? The rocket. Oh, Mr. Savage, do you need a few minutes? Um, can I have a few minutes? Sure. <laughs> So, Cranwood, Jane Plain sold you a defective rocket, correct? Yes! And then she took your frog, didn't she? Yes! And this frog was going to put you in the record books, wasn't he? Yes! Yes, it's all true! Do you see your frog in this courtroom? Yes! He's the ugly thing with the long green legs! Hey! Oh, sorry! (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Cranwood. Whoa! Your Honor, I'd like to call Jane Plain to the stand. Jane, Jane, Jane. Jane. So, you kidnapped Cranwood's frog, didn't you, Miss Plain? I was saving his life. How? By stealing his frog? Not Cranwood's life, the frog's. Oh, well, what about your rocket? I built that rocket to Mr. Cranwood's exact specifications. Big and shiny! Yes, and it had to be able to travel in outer space. And it can. (laughs) So you say, Ms. Plain. Your Honor, I call rocket expert Dr. Julie Bean to the stand. Good for you. (laughs) Dr. Bean, does this rocket push against the air? Well, yeah, but... Please explain for the court. Well, when you start a rocket engine, you ignite the fuel in here. The fuel explodes... Kaboom! <laughs> right. Blammo! Anyway, it explodes and attempts to get out. The only way out is through this opening. Everything shoots out here, and of course, if there is air outside, it will push against that air. Thank you, Dr. Bean. You see this? That's where this case is. It's in the bag. That's my lunch! Oh, sorry. Little help? (laughs) Your Honor, this farce has gone on long enough. I ask that the court order Jane Plain to give Cranwood back his frog and build him a brand new rocket immediately. Sit down and be quiet. Right. Miss Grimple? Thank you, Your Honor. Dr. Bean, does pushing against the air make a rocket go forward? Pay attention, Cram, my man. We're about to taste victory. No, it doesn't. Wait a minute. What do you mean rockets don't move by pushing against the air? Rockets move because of Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. (laughs) Your Honor, I call third law of motion expert Professor Parsons to the stand. Hello again, everybody. (laughs) You gotta learn to play the camera. (laughs) Hit me. Hit me with your best shot. Okay. Can you explain how a rocket motor moves a rocket? Wait a minute. Before Professor Parsons explains how a rocket motor moves a rocket, let's try to figure it out for ourselves in the science court lab. But before we leave the courtroom, let's review what's happening in the trial. J.C. Cramwood is convinced that the rocket Jane Plain built for him won't fly in outer space because there's no air out there. But Jane Plain claims that it will fly in outer space and that Cramwood just doesn't understand how rockets work. How does a rocket motor move a rocket? Let's go to the Science Corps laboratory to investigate this whole rocket thing for ourselves. You've already learned quite a bit about how rockets move. I think we're ready to get back to the courtroom to hear the rest of Professor Parsons' explanation. Let's go. Well, I'm no rocket scientist. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I am. (laughs) All right, let's have a look-see. You see this balloon? It's full of air, which means there's pressure in every direction. This is like the inside of a rocket engine where the fuel is lighted and explodes. Kaboom! 
Yeah, that's right. Thanks for the sound effects. <laughs> anyway, the balloon doesn't move, even with all the pressure inside. It just sits there. But if we put a hole in the balloon, then the air flows out here. So now, one of those arrows has no balloon to push against. Well, yes, that's right. Now there are more arrows pushing to the left than to the right. So the balloon would start moving to the left, right? Right, left. You mean like this? Put a piece of tape over it first. All right. Ow! I stuck my finger! Fred, you know the sharp objects rule. Please be careful. I know. I was a little naughty. You mean like this, Professor? Ow! Well, actually, I mean like this. Ow! <gasps> oh, the pain! Call a medic! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. The air coming out of the balloon was pushing against the air in the courtroom. But that's not why the balloon took off. Even if there were a vacuum in this room. You mean a vacuum cleaner? No. If there were no air in the room, we would call it a vacuum. We would? Okay. So, Professor Parsons, even if we could take all the air out of this room, the balloon would still act like a little rocket, right? Correct, because it's all based on Newton's third law of motion. You mean what goes around comes around? No. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, in the balloon, the escaping air is the action, and the balloon moving away is the reaction. Absolutely. So Jane Plane's rocket would work in outer space, would it not? Yes, it would, even with no air to push against. Well, I think we're ready for closing arguments. I could go on. Please don't. Mr. Savage, floor's all yours. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defense is basing their entire case on Newton's third law of motion. Well, la di da di da di. Where was it? la di da di? But what they don't mention is that my client has had that frog since it was a tiny tadpole. No, I haven't. You haven't? Well, then you paid top dollar for him at the pet shop, right? No, I found him in a pond. Oh, you found him. Well, thanks for telling me. Um, Jane's guilty and Newton Schmooten. Thank you. Newton Schmooten, very clever logic. Miss Grandpa? Thank you. Members of the jury, my client took the frog away from Cramwood because she knew her rocket would take the frog all the way into outer space where there is no air for the frog to breathe. But that oh. wasn't going to stop her rocket because Jane understands Newton's third law of motion that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> For every single action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So every reaction must have started with an action, too. For every single action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Reaction, say it again. So every reaction must have started with an action, too. I love the action. <laughs> oh, man. You've heard all the evidence, and now it's time to make a prediction. Will the jury find Jane Plain guilty or not guilty of making a bad rocket? Let's hear your opinions. Ooh, here comes the jury with their verdict. Let's get back to the trial to hear what it is. The jury has reached a verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jane Plain, not guilty of kidnapping the frog or building a defective rocket. We feel the evidence showed that the rocket was good and that Jane was acting in the best interest of the frog. Besides, the frog didn't belong to Cramwood anyway. He took it from a pond. What you're not supposed to do? Ooh. Hey, you're not even supposed to move rocks from national parks, let alone a frog. And if a bear tries to get into your car... Yeah. Okay, jury, we got gotcha. you. Science court is adjourned. Jen Bed is here with Jane Plain. Jane, what are you going to do with the frog? I'm putting him back in the pond where he belongs. Believe me, he'd much rather be sitting on a lily pad in front of a golden sunrise than on my leather couch in front of a giant screen TV. Wouldn't we all? Mr. Cramwood, what did you think of the verdict? Who cares? Rockets are for frogs. I'm going back to the big screen! Sure. A little green with envy, are we? 
Well, I'm Jen Vettis signing off from the Science Court courtroom. I hope you'll follow me into the lab so we can learn even more about rockets. I'll see you there. Thanks for stopping by the Science Court laboratory and investigating rockets with us. I hope you'll join us soon for another Science Court exploration. But until then, remember, it's not against the law to learn. Oh, brother.